Giant floating seeds pull you from reality as they whisk you off to the giant bustling epicenter of your journey, tree. Will you choose to align with tech, nature, or will you ride the balance in between? Interact with the inhabitants of tree and other park guests to forge your own story and path. Each individual's experience is different. Your journey may lead you to exploring outer space or to caves and underground lakes. Use these experiences to uncover the resources and the hidden secrets behind the sci-fi world of tree. You know what? I don't want to mess with this because the creators made something so perfect. <laughs> it's totally precious. And so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this one is different in the fact that there was nothing there when we started talking. And even like a third of the way through the episode, there's still nothing there. Like we created something out of nothing. Come at us, bro. We, we burped and something came out. On the third day, he burped. <laughs> I wonder if that's how God views, you know, all of creation. It's like, yeah, I burped a long time ago. I remember that, guys. I don't know why you're making such a big deal of it. <laughs> it's a freaking burp. <laughs> it's a freaking babe, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah what's, what city is God from if he has to have an accent? Boston. <laughs> it's a Bostonian. <laughs> dude, you see the sock? I was roofing the universe the other day. <laughs> I don't know if anybody caught it earlier in the podcast. I was in Orlando. Uh, I went to uh, the the Pandora thing, right, mm-hmm, in Animal mm-hmm. Kingdom, and I went on the Avatar ride. Not to spoil too much, but it's insane. Cool. And they did, like, a signature Disney move that, like, drives me insane where um, – I'm not going to give away too much, but at one point you're flying over a uh, like a stampede of some kind, and – you smell dirt. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so I feel like the the different sections of this tree, like you could have something like that where like so you get you go up in the 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 seed and it it melts away, you walk into to solve your puzzle, right? And like you're you get this like full sensory there's movement of lights. There's like a scent. So you just kind of like touch everything except taste. No, that's really cool. But then we did talk about having the the food area where you learn about how food is made in this futuristic society that fully embraces nature. So mm. there is the taste element and, and the smell could be, you know, kind of like natural smells. Like, you know, so this, the smell of dirt, like you said, or like um, sliced tomatoes or whatever. Um, that'd be yeah. really interesting if it's like, you know, the different areas kind of smell like even if it's just different kinds of trees, you know, this, this huge future tree, maybe it's um, kind of like a hybrid of several different types of trees. So certain passages smell like pine. Is there anything else you want to add to tree? I don't know. I feel like there's nothing overarching that we can add to it aside from getting specific. You right. Know? Right. I think the next, the most substantial additions we could do would be to get more granular with it, get into the next stage of, of developing, which is not what we're here to do. So we don't need to worry yeah, about it. Yeah, we right would now. just write the young adult novels. I really want to, though. That sounds awesome. Uh, tree, where this is brilliant. <laughs> it was, it was a fun idea. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, this you're is totally a fine. Idea right here. I mean, Nick Robes is a pretty cool guy, and I was like, okay, do you have an idea for your the park? And he's like, uh, no, I just don't really want to have one. I'm like, let's just make something up. And I'm like, okay. I'm down. I trust you. I love that everyone who meets Nick Robes is just like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I have no problem with that. Yeah, I can't see it going badly, so uh, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah, there's a lot of different kind of sci-fi tropes that kind of feed into this, and I think that's kind of fun to see how each each part guest can kind of bring their own sci-fi baggage with them, their own opinions on how this should go. It's almost like a it's like a role-playing game almost. Like You have to take the role of a character in a story that hasn't been told yet. And I think that's really fascinating. And there's always that conflict between those sides and you can have them interact. So like, okay, last time you decided to go on the nature path and you got a little souvenir, Mm -hmm. like a little glowing rock or whatever. And you meet up with somebody who's going like tech tech route or like they're like, oh, I want to go on the more technological sci-fi missions or whatever. And you're like, can't you see that this is the better way? You hold up the little glowing rock and they're like, oh, that's, you know, that's very interesting. And they have their own like LED thing. That's awesome. I really love that. That's a really fun interplay. And I think that having each person be able to choose their own path and their own um, their own kind of alignment within that spectrum between yeah. nature and technology is, is cool. And it creates a lot of conversations, I believe, and, and kind of tribe mentality as well. If you think of what it would look like to be inside of a tree, 
it would be like nothing you've ever seen before. Right. But actually, like, going through the xylem and phloem and all that, and, and I can imagine, like, you know, how would you interact with a, a giant animatronic, you know, termite or, or something, or a, or even, like, a creature not from Earth. That you've never seen before, too. It's not like you have an action figure of this character already. It's like, what the heck is that thing? And it's asking me questions. Like, you have to respond as yourself in that character, almost. It's not like, I'm Buzz Lightyear, and I'm going to Star Command. It's like, I guess I'm me. I don't know what's even happening. Like, I'm in the tree, and this guy's talking to me. I have to figure out what to do. It's yeah. almost... It's almost like you could use this as a form of, like, therapy to, like, get outside yourself and see what you and what humanity looks at, like, from the outside. Wow. I, I, I love the idea of human as, like, just another science fiction race. Yes. Oh, I'm so <laughs> I love that. I love uh, when humans aren't the top dog anymore because that's such an alien thing to us. It's so much more exciting to think that way. Okay, um, you know, I've, I've, I've hit a branch point in my mission. I can go one of these different ways, and to go through this route... I get to choose from, you know, one of three different, you know, items and you like attach a, a bracelet onto your wrist and now like you have like armored forearms or something or like, yes. oh, you need the little antenna things and like you become wow. more of your own type of creature as you progress, like just aesthetically, but you can really get into the mindset. Dude, I love that. That kind of takes certain elements from like uh, the Dungeons and Dragons episode, Forgotten Realms yeah. that we did, where where you kind of pick your class, like you pick what kind of tools you're going to be using through your journey. But this is even cooler than that because it's a totally an original IP. So you weren't like, (laughs) you know, dwarves are cool. I want to be like Gimli or whatever. Yeah. You're not constrained. You're like, well, I guess I have an antenna now. Like my guy looks all goofy. Now I need to get some, (laughs) some cool swords or something. I, I, I love the idea of each person being able to tell their own story there and experience their own story. And so then, Kind of like we talked about with the survivor thing. Like when you leave, there's a premium option of getting, here's your story, your survivor story. They'd be like, this is what you looked like when you first entered here. You aligned with this person. They can kind of tell your story based on your path through the park. Like they can tell which which choice you made during the story and which characters you gravitated towards and who you were teammates with and who your rivals were. And they can incorporate that all into a story that's unique every time you go back and you like write a diary entry in the mindset of your of your person yeah and that can carry forward in the park um where the next person who goes through you know maybe they read your diary entry as they're going through the same training you went through they're like oh uh you can uncover you know uh someone's journal like in this deep dark part of the tree you're like wow this is actually compiled of several different guests uh journal entries but it, it sounded enough like the same voice that they, they made a, a, an actual artifact in the park. That'd be awesome. For a mission, you could have, like, a room with with a little bit of water, and it's like, oh, I got to get to whatever thing in the middle. So you can say, like, I don't mind my feet getting wet, you know, or, like, let me put on these little stilts. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, there's handholds around the side. Let me get this grabo extendo arm and just, like, sort of <laughs> augmenting yourself over time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the idea of your characters evolving is really unusual and really interesting as well. And it totally fits with the kind of sci-fi technology theme. Uh, also, I think that action figures could be really cool if, if they can uh, build it from pieces. Print. Right, right. We know that you've got eye stalks. You're this height. This is what your face looks like. There's your action figure. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Even if it's basically just like Legos where they they th- custom print the head, you know, it's like this guy's got stilts and that guy's got cicada wings we can just kind of snap those pieces on and uh there you yeah. go 20 bucks collectors like people who keep going back to build up their own little armies of me's that i could be <laughs> that's, oh, that's awesome great. yeah this would make a cool video game too i think uh where yeah. you get to choose your own path and instead of just like i have to get this tool to let me do this thing i can kind of evolve to do this thing that's awesome yeah the first thing i thought of was rivendell from uh just from an aesthetic uh sort of point of view you know the way like if if you guys remember how rivendell looked in uh spe- specifically the fellowship of the ring um where everything just seemed to be growing you know all their all their buildings and like their their stairways and just everything seemed to be sort of you know the rooms are kind of growing out of the tree and like things like that that's the only thing i think i could add to it any sort of uh, facility you need seems to have been grown from from within this tree
All right, dude. Um, Nick, thank you for being on the show. As always, an honor and a privilege, sir. Well, listeners, uh, we owe this guy something. So if you haven't listened to What's With You, Scooby-Doo, check it out. Let's do this. Dot com with two O's. <laughs> I love that URL. It's so good. Uh, Zane, thank you so much for being on the Season 2 Remodels and Renovations. My pleasure. Listeners, if you guys haven't checked out Cartoncast, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Get it together. Come on. It's a, it's a really fun show. Yeah, get it together. <laughs> We're so lonely. <laughs> wow, did you hear that? That was true desperation. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thanks for having us, man. If you are intrigued with uh, anything we've talked about particularly related to, to Green Hill Manor and our albums and you know you you have some ideas or, or, or anything at all that you would like to share with us you know feel free to send us an email anytime sightyoursound at gmail.com I mean you can find um, all our social media links sightyoursoundtheater.com so head on over there um, you know discover more of our albums there might be something in there that you you know really latch on to um and we'd love to hear from you we we appreciate every one of you listening not just to the podcast but to our music and and, and contributing that way so um please do so and um we love each and every one of you listeners thank you for being with me through two whole seasons it's so exciting the show's been so much fun to do uh i will be returning november 6th with season three of amusement sparks uh, just expect the production quality to keep getting better and better. And uh, stay tuned to AmusementSparks.com or our Facebook slash Reddit pages. Uh, there should be some news coming out in the next few months about upcoming podcasts. And uh, Amusement Sparks also making the transition onto YouTube. It'll continue to be distributed, of course, through your regular podcast channels. But just trying to reach out a little bit more and uh, add some visual elements to the, the show as well. So November 6th, Season 3 premiere. But there will be some fun stuff between now and then. It's not like I'm going to be taking a break, really. I'll just be working on different aspects of the show. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for your support for these past uh, 12 episodes. And if you want to do the show a solid, uh, feel free to leave us a review on iTunes. Just go to iTunes, search Amusement Sparks, click the podcast, and uh, click write a review. That would help out a lot. Uh, Yeah, thank you so much for listening. You guys are awesome.